Hey there, Lick and Riffers, and welcome back to yet another awesome soloing lesson here on Lick and Riff, in which we're going to talk about the power of rhythmic displacement. Rhythmic displacement is one of those coveted secret skills that uh, make your playing sounds a lot more complicated than it is. And rhythmic displacement is actually very, very simple to understand, but it's actually pretty challenging to execute because you have to learn to hear it. Okay, this is um, a skill that is deeply, deeply based in being able to grasp rhythm outside of rhythm. And let me tell you what I mean. A great example of rhythmic displacement would be to take the classic Michael Jackson riff. Okay, count it with me. Da 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 dum dum da da dum dum da da dum dum dum. Okay, this riff starts on the offbeat. Da 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 dum dum da da dum dum da da dum dum dum. Okay, it's on the offbeat. It's a highly syncopated. Riff. Now, if we take this riff and we start it on the beat and we play it exactly the same way, in this case, sing it exactly the same way because I need my hand okay, to count, um, and I want you to understand the thinking behind this before we start playing, if we play it on the beats, okay, right on the beat, instead of off the beats, we get something completely different because the whole accentuation of the riff changes. Let's play it, sing it one more time. What happens when we play it on the beat? What happens is pure musical magic. It's a completely different riff. It's a completely different feeling. Because the accentuation is different. The focus is different. Instead of one. We have. Okay, can you hear the difference? It's a subtle but powerful difference. It's a completely different song. Okay, the Michael Jackson song, because of the syncopation, is a very um, is a very powerful funk feel. Okay, while on the beat, it sounds a little bit Middle Eastern. Okay? That's the power of rhythmic displacement. Now, rhythmic displacement, when you solo, um, can be very, very difficult, or it can be very simple to execute. And I showed you this before, when we talked about groups of five or groups of seven. Because if you take the pentatonic scale and you play it in groups of five notes, this gives you a very interesting and disorienting um, feeling of the scale. It's a highly disorienting way to play the pentatonic scale. Hey, where's the beat? Hey, this is rhythmic displacement. That's, that's what happens when you play rhythmic displacement. Um, it, uh, it throws things a little bit out of whack and makes it sound a lot more interesting. Now, when I showed you how to play this in groups of seven, Right? 
What happened was that it became a completely different displacement. And if you, uh, if you count it, Okay, then you then you see that each group of five in this instant lands on a different part of the beat in a different part of the bar and then it naturally gains its own accentuation you see it's one time and it's okay it's it's really it, it's so subtle you might not hear it okay it's it's the the accentuation moved from the last note to the penultimate note to the note before last okay because that's the note on the beat right now okay the note before last okay now the beat is on the second note so the whole scale actually gains different accents this was a mixture of fives and sevens, okay? A, a, a group of seven, right? Is a little bit more natural to our ears for some reason, but if we uh, if we take a simple lick, a very very simple lick, and we turn it into a um, a seven eight time lick this is where things get interesting and this is really simple to play but it can get confusing I'm talking about this that's it da, 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 da. okay now try to sing it you see how it changes between beats the accentuation is different. You land on the beat at a different time. Now, if I play it, you can't really hear it as when I sing it, okay? Because you need a whole band setting in order to truly appreciate it. But try to see if you can hear uh, the if you can hear the the rhythmic displacement at work. <laughs> That's how powerful rhythmic displacement is. Now I know sometimes I uh, I did not play the seven eight time. I played da 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 da, and then I continued playing. That's the beauty of rhythmic displacement. It disorients you. And when you're playing straight eighths or straight sixteenth notes or triplets all the time, and suddenly you throw in this rhythmic displacement in there, it's super powerful and it's effective as heck. Um, now, there are many, many ways to do this. You can, uh, you can take a full scale and play it in groups of five. Let's take the Dorian, uh, the Dorian blue scale. Okay, this was groups of five. And if you get used to playing it and build up speed um, relatively well with this shape, then while you're playing and you want to throw in a scale run, then instead of throwing a run-of-the-mill scale run, just play the groups of five. And if you do it consecutively without stopping, okay, that's a group of five. Then 
the scale lands on different spots of the beat. Okay? It, it gains a different accentuation as it goes along. And if you play it really, really fast, um, I personally don't enjoy super fast uh, playing. I prefer funky uh, short licks more than anything else, uh, probably because I'm highly influenced by John Schofield. Um, so I never worked on really upping my speed that much. Uh, but I believe that if I practice this, you know, for a few days, then I can build up speed really nicely. You see? You see, it's not... It's not that difficult once you, uh, once you get the idea. Now, once you do this, um, and it's natural for you to play those groupings of five and seven notes, um, and you don't stop, okay? Because if you stop, it's no longer displaced, okay? If you play it like this. It's no longer displaced. It's, it falls exactly on the same accent. It has exactly the same feel throughout. But if you do it like this... Hey, you can also ascend. Hey, obviously you can ascend the scale uh, the same way. I showed you this... Uh, let's see if I remember uh, the grouping. Yeah, uh, that's the grouping. It's, uh, it's, it's a basic line. You see, it, it's, it's magic. It's musical magic without working that hard. Okay, and and this like the da 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 that's that's a really cool and powerful lick. In case you just you need a breather in the middle of a solo or in the middle of an improvisation. See, it's it's a it's a perfect uh, intermission tool uh, because it's the the listener doesn't really know what's going on there, um, and they're like, "What?" It, it's it sounds simple, but it's not. Something something is odd about this lick, and literally something is odd. It's an odd time lick. That's exactly the power of rhythmic displacement. I'm sure it happened to you uh, that you heard a song that started with the guitar part. Okay, only the guitar track, and then the drums kicked in um, a couple of bars later. Or it started with a synthesizer riff, and when the drums and the rest of the instruments kicked in, it sounded entirely different than you thought it would. And that's rhythmic displacement. And that's a really cool trick that producers use. Sometimes the guitar starts playing the riff, but then the drums surprise you because they don't land where you think they would land, because the riff did not start on the beat. It started on the off beat, or it, st uh, or it started on the second beat of the bar, or instead of the first. Um, for example, if, if, you, um, if you heard the Michael Jackson riff, before the drums kicked in, then the first time you would hear it, you would hear it as being played on the beats. You would hear and suddenly it would change on you. It's the same riff, it's exactly the same piece of music, and yet it completely transforms 
right in front of your ears. That's musical magic. That's rhythmic displacement. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and I will see you in the next lesson. Bye for now. Have fun. Enjoy.